open our discussion today by looking at the muscular system and beginning with its functions. Body movement. Look at skeletal muscles around the body. You use those primarily to pull on bones, and that's how we get around and do all the things we need. Maintenance of posture, whether you're sitting up, standing up, whatever that may be. <clears throat> There's lots of muscles in the body responsible for that. Lower limbs, along your spine, and elsewhere. Ventilation, which is to move air in and out of your lungs. There's several muscles involved with that. The diaphragm muscle is a very big one. Production of body heat. Now, this system's not the only place that body heat comes from, but since muscle makes up such a large percent of your body mass, here's where the majority of the heat comes from. Communication. Think about if you want to speak, use facial expressions or whatever. You've got to use skeletal muscles to do that. Constriction of organs and vessels. Now, that's going to be smooth muscle. We'll look at it a little in this chapter and a lot more in others. And then, of course, when you talk about heartbeat, you're talking about cardiac muscle. Look at these general characteristics that you see with muscles. The first one, contractility. Muscles get shorter. That's exactly what they do. When they get shorter, they pull on things. Or in the heart, they actually generate pressure inside of chambers. But they get shorter. It's basically all that muscles do. Muscles also have to be excitable. They have to be able to respond to a stimulus. And cells around the body like to respond to electric and chemical signals. We'll see a lot more on that in future chapters. Extensibility. After a muscle has gotten shorter, you got to be able to stretch it back out so that you can use it again. If you couldn't, they wouldn't be very useful to you. And then elasticity is because of a protein called the Titan filament, which is shaped sort of like a cold spring. So it gives muscles just a little bit of elasticity. Look at the three different types of muscle you see around the body. Skeletal, smooth, and cardiac. Now, this chapter is primarily about the skeletal. We'll see a lot more of the others in future chapters. But when you look at what skeletal muscle is for, movement, locomotion, you see first. Facial expressions. There's more skeletal muscles in your face than any other part of your body. Posture to keep you upright. Respiration we mentioned before. Actually, that's ventilation, movement of air. Many other things go with that, too. And skeletal muscle is voluntary, meaning it's under your conscious control and thought. Not many other things in your body are. Then you get down to smooth muscle. Now, this type of muscle is found in more places with more functions than the other two by far. You talk about hollow organs like the urinary bladder. When we look at the walls of blood vessels, you're going to see that all of them except the microscopic capillaries have got smooth muscle in the wall. That way you can change pressure and direct blood flow where you need it and when you need it. In your eyes, the iris, the colored part of your eyes, primarily smooth muscle. That's what makes that little hole in the front, the pupil, smaller and larger to regulate how much light's coming in it. A lot of glands in the body have smooth muscle around them. When they constrict, the material in those glands can be moved out of that region. The skin has a little erector pili muscles that'll stand your hairs up. So again, many different places and functions are associated with the smooth. Now again, with the smooth muscle, this is primarily involuntary for the most part. Very few exceptions to that right there. And again, you can see that's going to be controlled by the endocrine and autonomic divisions of the nervous system. You're going to see a lot more about those in future chapters, but those are your two primary controlling systems right there. Nervous, which the autonomic's one part of it, and the endocrine, it's all about hormones, chemical signals. And then lastly, down here, we have cardiac, only found in your heart, squeezes the chambers inside that heart, which are full of blood, generates pressure, and that's what causes the blood to move, is what's called a pressure gradient. Obviously, this right here is involuntary, and again, you'll see endocrine and nervous system controlling the heart in future chapters. So look at this muscle comparison right here. <clears throat> here we got some items we want to look at, then there's skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. And make sure you always remember the similarities and differences between these three. So with location, skeletal, it has to be attached to a bone. That's where it gets its name from. Cardiac is only in the heart. And then again, a smooth is in many other places. Look at your digestive tract. Your stomach and intestines are mostly smooth muscle. Wall of your urinary bladder, blood vessels, and so on. Now let's look at cell shape. Now, skeletal and cardiac are cylinder shaped. That means they're shaped like a pipe or a straw. Where smooth muscle is spindle shaped. That means it's tapered on the ends and thick in the middle. Think of something like the shape of a football. The nucleus, <clears throat> skeletal, has multiple nuclei, reason being it's actually a joining 
of individual cells back in embryonic development. So this one is multinucleated, and you will find the nuclei at the very outer edge, what's called the periphery of the cell. Looks like they're on the outside of it, but they're not. They're on the inside just being pushed against that cell membrane. Most all cardiacs just going to have one nucleus, same with smooth, and cardiac and smooth will have nuclei that are towards the center of the cell. That's where the nucleus is in almost all cells. When you talk about special cell connections in between these three types, you don't see any with skeletal. Reason being, <clears throat> you want skeletal muscle cells to work independently. We'll see more why that is further along. But cardiac has these special structures called intercalated disc, and smooth has gap junctions. Basically what those disc and junctions are, are ion channels connecting those cells. That lets them pass electric signals from one cell to the next. That lets them communicate in a very good way. After that, you see striations. Looks like stripes on a histology slide. Now, skeletal muscle has big, bold stripes. <clears throat> They're generally easy to see. They're there on cardiac, a little bit more difficult to see, and then you won't see them on smooth. We mentioned control before. Skeletal muscle is about the only thing you have voluntary control over in the body. Cardiac and smooth are obviously involuntary for the most part. Very few exceptions to that. And then when you talk about functions, again, skeletal muscles attached to the skeletal system. So moving bones is what it's all about. Heart generating pressure to move blood. And then again, with smooth being found in so many places, lots of functions. Food movement through the digestive tract, emptying the bladder, controlling the size of the wall, or excuse me, the size of blood vessels, and so on. <clears throat> so looking at skeletal muscle, here's a histology picture right here. Look at how these cells are cylindrical. Again, they're like pipes or straws. You can definitely see that running from left to right. Look at the bold stripes and striations. Easy to see on skeletal muscle. And look at the nuclei. Where you see these dark dots? They almost look like they're on the outside of the cell. They're on the edges, what they call the periphery. So when you look in skeletal muscle, you're going to primarily just see skeletal muscle cells. And they'll often call muscle cells, muscle fibers, same thing. There'd be some connective tissue, blood vessels, nerves, and other things in there with them. As we said, the cells are long and cylinder shaped. They're multinucleated and the nucleus is at the very outer edge. They're a little bit smaller in diameter in a small muscle, a little bit larger in a big one. And they're for the most part, very long cells, at least compared to others. Some of them in the body can be very long. Developed from myoblast. Remember any cell with blast in the name is a building cell. Myo means muscle in Latin. Those are muscle building cells. You have those in embryonic development, which build this skeletal muscle. You don't want to be losing skeletal muscle cells because once you do, that's it. They're gone. That's why this says the numbers remain constant. And as we said, they're strided or striped. It has to do with the arrangement of the myofilaments deeper on the inside that we'll look at further along. But also look at some connective tissues <clears throat> you see around muscles and the individual cells and different layers. First of all, deepest, you'll see this external lamina. Reticular fibers is what you'll find here. Those are actually very small, fine collagen fibers, and that'll surround the very outside of each one of those muscle cells. The sarcolemma is the cell membrane of those muscle cells. Right outside of it will be the endomysium. Again, look at that prefix endo, something to the inside. That'll be scattered in between all those individual muscle cells. Next, you'll see a connective tissue layer <clears throat> called the paramysium. Now, this right here will be around bundles of muscle cells. Muscle cells are bundled together into what's called fasciculus or fasciculi, which is plural. So around each one of those bundles, like if you took a handful of muscle cells, that would be a fasciculus, plural be fasciculi. The paramysium is the connective tissue around each one. And then superficially outside of those, you got the epimysium. Again, epi is always outer. That'll surround the entire muscle. Then outside of all that, you can also find a connective tissue layer called fascia. You find this deep to the skin, in between the skin and the muscle. Helps to hold the muscles together, as you see here. Separates them out. Allows for movement. Carries nerves, blood vessels, lymphatic vessels. And is continuous with tendons. Nerves and blood vessels are definitely found inside of this muscle. Motor neurons are the name of the neurons that control this muscle. 
Neurons have different functions. You'll look at that more when we look at that in the nervous system chapter and others. But remember, motor neurons are what's controlling these muscles here. You'll find the neuron cell bodies for these motor neurons <clears throat> in your brain and spinal cord, two different places, but they're both part of the central nervous system. And the axons, which is the output part of those neurons, extends from the brain and spinal cord out to the individual muscle cells. And some of the axons coming off these microscopic little neurons can be very long, might be as long as three feet and tall people going down to their lower limbs. So the axons branch out to each individual muscle cell, and we'll see how those are organized and controlled a little bit later on.